Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Okay, you hear me. Um, so you want to discuss uh, the healthy value of seed oils. If I got it right. Okay, so um, the issue is, um, I'm a German speaker, so don't uh, be confused if my English is bad. But um, the issue at hand is, um, when you look at studies, you have to... Um, You have to look if they're good quality and if they have a high risk of bias and you determine that with the hierarchy of evidence. For example, you showed a lot of uh, mechanistic research and the issue with mechanisms is that they have a very low trans translation rate to uh, human outcomes. That um, means that it's most likely that it won't turn out in humans what we see in the mechanism. That's why we have to look at stronger evidence and that's human health outcome data. Like you look at uh, RCT or cohorts who uh, look what uh, effects on certain markers like inflammation or lipids seed oils have in humans. And we have a few RCTs on that, and we have a few co cohort studies, and they show, uh, most of the times, they show benefits in all of these markers, and all the mechanisms you showed, they don't pan out if you look at the higher quality research. That's the short, uh, short summary of what we try to explain to you. Do you have human studies with uh, omega-6 and inflammation? Like uh, higher intake of omega-6 and lower intake of omega-3 and inflammation? Because in the last study that I showed you, actually there is a human study that... Can you, can, exactly can you, can you uh, provide me the link again? Then I can uh, look at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course. Uh, can you repost it? I'm going to provide you the ex. Um, the exact uh, wait and post and links here. Okay, wait. I open it. This is and human it human research. You said okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Exactly. This part. I open it. Wait a moment. Have a look. You can mm. just find this part. Right. Decreasing the omega 6 clear ratio. Right. To open it here. Mm. Is this the study Beans also reposted? Okay, Beans posted the link. Beans, can you talk too? Yes, the same one. Okay. Um, I can talk, okay. Uh, but you hear me, okay. Uh, wait, I have to look if it opens at my screen. Uh, I have a little bit issues. Wait. Open. Why it doesn't work? Yes, no, no, it works. Okay. What is this? Is this, uh, this is an article? Uh, importance of maintaining low omega-6, omega-3 ratio for reducing inflammation. So, okay, it's an article. Um, okay, I, I would need more time to read it. Uh, have you, is there human research in it? Because if I read one study, one study took mice and divided them into four groups. Okay, this is mice. And other animal study, fed mice, different high saturated fat diets. This is mice too. I think it's above the mice, the human study. Above the mice is the human study. Can you give me the, or can you look at it too and give me the reference? Because yeah. I'm looking. Yeah, try to copy. Ask, try low to grade like, Just try to okay, 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 wait. Okay, wait. We, we look at the first paper he, uh, he looks at. The consumption of seed oils is the claim. High in the omega-6 polyunsaturated fat, linonic acid contributes to low-grade inflammation, oxidative stress, stress, endothelial dysfunction, and atherosclerosis. Okay, we look at the first reference he provides. PubMed. Okay, it's a review too. High energy diet, fatty acids, and to tell the cell function implications for atherosclerosis. 
Diets high in fat and calories can lead. Okay, this was diets. This looked only at diets uh, high in fat and calories who correlate with uh, high omega-6 intake. And then what he, what he made out of the study is, if you go back, he made out of the consumption of seed oils high in omega-6 uh, contributes. So he said the seed oils caused this. Of all the seed oils, they were only a part of a high caloric diet full of junk food. So how he came to the conclusion with his first sentence that the seed oils caused the stuff. This the study didn't even look at it. I can uh, if I can screen share, I can show it you to you. Yeah. Wait, uh, how can I screen share here? Uh, wait, I have to look at this beans and no, they weren't. Uh, they can't find increasing omega 6, so it did not increase any from the ratio. God, lol, what do they say? Share a screen. Okay, Nick, thank you. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Uh, did, did you find the human part? Wait, live gain. Okay, I uh, wait. Can you see? Can you see? Uh huh, uh huh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I would have to uh, read the full paper, but I looked over it and it looks like they looked at high energy diets. Uh, here, diet sign fat and calories. Can you read it? Lead to hypertrichosemia, postprandial, lip postprandial lipemia, uh, a risk factor of atherosclerosis. I have to look where, if it even talks about seed oils. Our studies suggest, suggest that omega 6 fatty acids and especially linolenic acid causes endothelial dysfunction. Okay, but how? They never isolated uh, omega-6 um, in this review. I don't see even how they have done it. No. And Increasing the omega-6 to 3 ratio. But this look... This one? Where, where the claim, if you look at the claim he made, I can go up. The claim was the consumption of seed oils in the omega-6 polyunsaturated fat, linolenic acid, contributes to low-grade inflammation, oxidative stress, endothelial dysfunction, and atherosclerosis. If we go and look at the reference, the reference he provides doesn't prove that. Which, which number is the reference? 28? Here, the one, here, one. And this is a, a, a review from uh, 2001 who looks at high energy diets, fatty acids, and endothelial cell function. But it doesn't... Which reference did you get this? From which number reference? This is the reference one. If you go here, you look at my screen here. This is the claim he made. This is the reference he provides. Henning B. Et al. You go, you go at the reference. Mm, I took it. Wait, I have to look at the chat. Hmm. I can't connect the screen share. But do you see you, you see my screen? You see my screen? It's not reference one. Reference one is reference one, yeah. And it's and now show me where in reference one they isolated. Look that's yeah. the name of reference one. In the Ref article. reference I one is high energy diets and endothelial cell function. I wait, I uh, send it in the chat. In the beginning, that's in the beginning. I'm speaking about the human study, which is reference. Uh, okay, but you acknowledge that uh, he, didn't back, he didn't back He didn't back up. He, yeah, okay, 28. 28. I look 29. at it, and I look at it, but he didn't, he made claims. Uh, right now in the beginning of his article and it isn't backed up by the reference. I just want you to acknowledge that. 
So now we go at reference 28. Okay, wait. Decreasing the omega-6 to 3 ratio decreases inflammation. Uh, decreasing omega-6 seems to reduce inflammation response to a high-fat meal. For example, one study looking at many medicals adjusted omega-6 patients. Okay, patients ingested two high saturated fats meals with their high omega-6 ratio, low omega-6 ratio, and the water control in a randomized crossover trial, reducing the omega-6 to 3 ratio and cost lower. Uh, blah blah blah. Additional. Okay, but they they didn't did they measure? Um, okay, the first issue is um, when they decreased the omega six to three <laughs> ratio, God they uh, also consumed less omega three. And and th yes, this, and my this, initial yeah 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 and that, my but, but, yeah, but, but, looked, yeah my my and, initial and, position was about this about this. I was arguing with that guy Nick. Uh, about yeah, fish oil. I, I about, know about but, fish oil. But, but, because but wait, fish oil, when, when you have omega six, yeah, rich yeah. But wait, but wait, and proper ratio. Yeah, That's but wait. Oh, oh, okay, wait. But this looks uh, first. It looks only at uh, a short time, um, a short time marker. So it's not uh, long term inflammation. It's just uh, an acute response. And second, uh, it. It it, it 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 isn't about yeah and, and it isn't about the ratio per se. It's about uh, they also reduced uh, omega three intake, but yeah, I, it, it doesn't show what you think it shows. But Did exactly you say this study? Where where the where they no, measured? But, uh, did you provided reference twenty eight? But look, where they we measured? Were speaking, <laughs> we were speaking for the same thing about the proper <laughs> ratio of omega three and omega six. This study shows exactly this thing. Okay, okay, wait. Let, look, look, look in the chat. Look in the chat. Uh, when you were omega three, exactly this thing. Okay, look, look what Nick showed. What they uh, did. Okay, so. Saturated fat mostly stayed the same. PUFA mostly stayed the same. <laughs> omega 6, 10 to 13. Omega 3. Yeah, they reduced omega 3. And then they said, oh, okay, yeah. So they reduced uh, the omega yeah. 3 nearly to zero. And <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I was guessing. So, so here's the issue. Usually <laughs> with these studies, like when they claim to have found some effect of the ratio, what we're actually looking at usually, if you dig into the methodology, is that they're just fucking around with the denominator, which is the omega-3. They're not actually fucking around with the numerator and actually showing a difference. Usually the numerator stays static and the denominator is just going up and then they say there are benefits and then, oh, look, the omega-3 to omega-6 or omega-6 to omega-3 ratio matters. And it's like, well, that's literally not what's being shown here. What's being shown here is that manipulating the denominator matters. Uh, they're not actually showing that the ratio itself is the thing that's mattering. That, that's the issue. And also, what's with this markers they use for uh, inflammation? Isn't that just uh, markers in the short term? And does, that really, does it really matter? Because Do we have the exact think... numbers of the ratio, actually. Do we have, like, how much, in what ratio exactly they have taken? Like, how Can... much omega 3, how much omega 6, you know? Do we I go, that, that wait, I, I go in, I can look. Wait, if I can get hold on, hold tips. on. Now, now he, n I'm very unclear about what you're saying. Now the denominators are wrong to you? What do you mean by that? I mean, do we have the exact ratio of omega-3 and omega-6 that they have taken? We, we have it's just right in front of you. It's, it's right, yeah, it's right uh, the ratio, we, we have the ratio. It was yeah. high omega was 80 to 1 and low was uh, 3 to 1. Yeah, and the way they achieved... Uh, so it's... So the high ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 was uh, about, yeah, about 18 to 1. And, and the low ratio was about 3 to 1. still don't have the exact number, let's say, uh, yeah, it's 15 in the chat. grams of omega-6. <laughs> it, it's, it's, like, it, like, if, if the claim is about the ratio, the absolute amounts don't matter. Right? It's tangential. So if no, the claim... The absolute, the absolute amount matters. Like, it's well, one thing the, well then that, that's a, that's, that would be a different claim. Then that would be a different claim. Right? So... 
if you're saying that the I mean, that the omega three, if you're saying that the ratio matters, that's one thing. Um, if you're saying that the ratio matters and there's some threshold um, for the absolute amounts, that that would be a different claim. So I just want to be clear on what exactly it is that you're claiming. Matter. So, both, so both the ratio and the amount. Matter. Okay. Okay. So. Assuming sufficiency for both, what's is there any particular harm of increasing omega six? Assuming sufficiency of both omega six and omega three. Right, because like if you're claiming that the absolute amounts matter, right? Then yeah, yeah, presu yeah. presumably, Notice. then the, then there's some kind of threshold. Um, and if you're also making the additional claim that, like, omega-6 is bad somehow, presumably there's an additional threshold of harm regardless of the ratio. Right, so it seems like there's this Goldilocks zone, you know, if, you, if your amounts are inadequate, yeah, maybe the ratio doesn't matter so much, but then there's this Goldilocks zone where the ratio matters, but then, oh, there's this other threshold where even if the ratio, even if the absolute amounts have been satisfied, if you increase the, the numerator, enormously then then there is also some deleterious effect so it's it seems uh, take a look really at the chat. take a look at the chat uh matt posted something what they actually did in the trial so look look at the claim he made with the ratio patients ingested two high saturated fat uh oral fat tolerance tests one gram of fat per kilogram body weight with either a high omega-6 to omega-3 ratio 18 to 1 or a low omega-6 to omega-3 ratio 3 to 1 uh and a water control in a randomized crossover trial reducing the omega-6 to omega-3 ratio caused a lower release of pro-inflammatory cytokine uh interleukin-6 at hours uh 6 and 8.28 that's De Nickel Cornholio's claim. Uh, in this trial, we see. So, oh wait, are any of these actually statistically significantly different than each other? No. Oh, oh, well, okay then. Like, wh then what? What the fuck are we talking about? Yeah. Like, uh, they showed. They showed. They, they showed compatibility with differential results, but they didn't show statistically significantly different differential results of these different oral fat tolerance tests um, it, it's like with the first reference uh he, he wrote some claims with oxidative stress and uh, arterial dysfunction and stuff like that and then you go at the reference and it doesn't support it and it's it, it's the same yeah so <laughs> contrary to our hypothesis increasing the omega-3 content of an oral fat tolerance test did not elicit differential postprandial inflammatory responses and interestingly the postprandial changes in inflammatory marker concentrations were not different between oral fat tolerance tests and water which means that not none of the diet conditions none of the fatty acid conditions actually produce differential effects statistically significantly different differential effects in uh, inflammatory markers, particularly interleukin six. So I mean, like the reference just actually straightforwardly doesn't doesn't support the claim. So like this is this is another reason why <laughs> I I don't trust J James De Nickel and uh, James De Nickel Cornholio or James De Nickel Antonio. I, I I don't trust this guy because his inferences are almost universally understood as being flawed when you actually dig into his methods when you actually dig into his. Um, into his references like he ends up actually saying things that are just straightforwardly false uh and this is one such example i haven't seen this before but this just this just further lends credibility to my induction that the guy is just a uh he's a motivated can, reasoner a charlatan of, um, can you give me the link of the the last one contrary to our hypothesis like this reference where, where yeah that, that, this that, that, that would be contained within the first reference which is linked in the chat so if we go to that reference and then yeah maybe i have it open there you have to go 28 reference 28 pop mid. contrary wait i'm not seeing it in a keyword search uh in reference 28 we have three links contrary to our Pugmet, Crossref, google score which one yeah this is this is all the same study this is just 
Uh, I'm not seeing the know. quote. Hold on. We have maybe a, we have to go full text, wait. Mm, full text. Well, F2K, the abstract wait, is wait. contained within the full text that I have open, and I'm 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 not seeing the. Sure, I don't. The quotation. I don't find is anything. It, what you what, was it from the abstract? I don't know. Because maybe, I, maybe I'm looking at because. The Maybe I'm I think way. Matt opened the full text. I go to Sci-Hub, wait. Skyhub. <coughs> uh, I have tomorrow, like, exam, and I'm doing this stuff. Um, Guys, um, the, the thing you're sending, it's not from the same reference, actually. <laughs> the, yep. That's what made me impression. Yeah, no wait. Point. Yeah, wait, wait. I am using something. Yes. <laughs> well, no, that's yet to be divulged. This is not the kind of mistake that Matt usually makes. He's probably looking at something else. Guys, you're trying to trap me on insufficient evidence. For Why? The well, well, it, listen, 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 like just, just to let <laughs> Why not? Like, li listen, listen, listen. No, no, no. Either, either listen, listen or get muted. All right. Even if, even if this particular reference found some interaction between those different fatty acids ad adjusting the, the denominator, it still would not support your claim. Well, okay, well, wait, I think I have it. Let's say, uh, let's say, are too much omega-6 and too little omega-3 harmful? Is, is this claim right or wrong? Well, what's the claim? Sorry? Let's say claim too much omega-6 to too little omega-3. Is this healthy? Wait, um... Like eating sunflower oil? I'll, I'll give you my answer. I'll give you my answer. I don't know what too much omega-6 means, but it's clear to me that too little omega-3 is a bad thing. I would agree with that. And does it uh, too much omega-6 make it even worse when you have too little omega-3? Well, you see, the, the thing is that I, I just don't understand the question. Like, too little omega-3 is bad. My question would be, does additional omega-6 in the context of omega-3 sufficiency confer any negative effects? My position there is that I, I'm largely deficiency. agnostic not about it. Pardon me? To deficiency, not to sufficiency. Like, omega, too much omega-6 and too little. Like, the standard diet, let's say, like, with most well, people. You see, that whether That's or not, whether or not the standard diet is har harmful or not as a function of any fatty acids like it, it, you wouldn't be able to disentangle um or it's not clear how you disentangle the effects of insufficient omega-3 from too much omega-6 quote unquote my my question I'll, I'll just i'll just state my question again is whether or not additional omega-6 confers any negative effects in the context of omega-3 adequacy. So in populations that are adequate omega-3 in omega-3, would just giving them more omega-6 confer some kind of negative health effect? I'm agnostic about that. I, I well actually no, I I'm not particularly Maybe agnostic about that because it would appear that that's not the case in the literature. Yes, but I even read in what some of the studies presented here that um it acts like Box defects. The oh, anti-inflammatory defects. Uh, okay, okay. I, I have a specific point. Sorry, I, I, ha I have clarity on what uh, on what Matt was talking about. So he wasn't talking about that very first study. Um, what he was talking about was a particular claim that De Nicola Antonio made in the paper, and then the supporting reference for that claim, not showing that uh, that the claim actually. Is supported, um, and that was it. Well, looks like ref from the human study. The human study. It's the only thing that. Yeah, it, it, it's reference twenty-eight. That's the one that he's talking about. That's the that's one that's one of the human studies that um, that was actually put on the table by De Nicola Antonio. I think that's why. Um, yeah, the links the in the chat. That he could 
it, it's not from, from that reference. It's from the first reference. We are looking for 28 reference. Yeah, 28. We look at 28. Yes, but what you copied, it's not in 28 reference. What? What do you mean? With study? The last yeah. text that you copied, it's not from 28. Wait, we talked first about the first one, and after that, we talked about the second one. Yeah, so it, I, I think see. it was just a little bit of a misunderstanding. Okay, because um, I have the same open in Sci-Hub, like you posted right in there. So maybe I posted at the beginning the wrong one. Yeah, I, I, I first talked with you about reference one. That's how we started the conversation. Yeah, I, I, the I see it now, I, I see it now. Yeah, the yeah, and, and contrary that, to our yeah. hypothesis, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I see it. Um, we can go straight to 28, to the human study. Yeah, we, that's what we're talking we about right now. Yeah, and the, basically the uh, the methodology in the study was uh, a group was given either water or two high-fat um, oral fat tolerance tests that were either high in omega-3 or low in omega-3. Now, notice in the table that actually says low N3 or high N3, um, which basically is... is it's it's literally just supporting what I had said. Usually, in when in this type of literature, what they're doing is just manipulating the denominator and not manipulating the numerator. So if you drop omega three in a population, I fully expect things to go in the wrong direction. Um, that didn't happen in this particular study, but in general, I would actually expect that to happen. That's why people recommend Fisher. Because wait, wait. most people consume too much omega six, which is pro, well, and well, pro well, inflammatory. I well, I don't know if that's true, but when people are yeah, you are well, not sure about that. About yeah, I'm not. I'm not uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not problem. sure whether or not most people yeah. who are recommending fish oil are doing so because most people eat too many omega sixes. That I'm not sure about. What I am sure about is that when I have heard omega-6 or omega-3 supplementation being recommended, it's usually in the context of its role as an essential nutrient. Mm -hmm. Right, like, you should supplement this because people are usually inadequate, and it's an essential nutrient. Let's say in vegans, in vegans, they, they don't need that much omega-3. And they don't consume that much omega six necessary. Um, like, what's the question? People with traditional standard diet usually consume more omega six than vegans. Oh yeah, I usually. would grant. I would grant that. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's more benefit. It's even more beneficial for them to take fish oil than for vegans. You know, vegans well, well, don't even well, need well yeah. Three. I mean, like I, I would grant that too because you're talking about a population that's probably omega three insufficient. So I, I would grant that you'd see additional benefits giving them omega three. Yeah. Now, now and let's. They use too much omega six, and this creates well, this balance. Well, that's it. Wait, that's a different claim. Summer. That that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying. That's what I'm saying since the beginning. Okay, okay, okay. But what what I'm saying is that the population that you're talking yeah. like, it's not clear that say say they were omega three insufficient, right? And we did not give mm -hmm. them additional omega three. It's not clear that dropping omega six would actually improve their health outcomes. It's clear that giving them omega three would improve their health outcomes. Now, if you did bring them up to sufficiency and added even more omega six. It's not clear that that yeah. would have any negative health outcomes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So he says it's more about increasing omega-3 to a sufficient level than uh, decreasing omega-6 or Correct. having too high amounts of omega-6. Yeah, and, and, so, and yeah. The, the reason I form this belief is because when you actually go into, um, say, population-level health outcome data, like prospective cohort studies, and they actually provide kind of univariable models for both for for omega-6 omega-3 and the ratio what you usually find is that omega-6 does not associate with a statistically significantly um different uh outcome but omega-3 insufficiency does but then when you slap them both in the ratio it looks like the ratio matters when it's really the denominator is the only thing that's really um conferring any sort of risk so like in that case, why are we even looking at the ratio? Why are we even looking at the ratio? 
we should probably just be looking at insufficient omega-3 because in almost all of those analyses that I've seen, it is the thing that is driving the effect. Not too much omega-6. Um, Why not looking at both? Both the denominator and the ratio. Sorry, what was the question? I mean, why we don't look both the denominator and the ratio? Like, three well, to one. See, like, and the amount. So let's say you have let's say you have a ratio of omega six to omega three that's like eighteen to one, and say so you, yes. you and say within the context of that ratio, omega three is insufficient. So you boost omega three. So you're increasing the denominator. To a point where now mm -hmm. maybe the ratio is instead of 18 to 1, it's now 3 to 1, right? And if you look at that ratio and you didn't know that that's how they did it, you can interpret that a couple ways. You can interpret that like maybe they reduced the denominator, maybe they, denoced, they reduced the numerator, or maybe they increased the denominator. Now, in, in analyses that just give a ratio, it's not clear which one is actually moving, the numerator or the denominator. But in analyses where they do show you which one is moving and which one moves and produces a statistically significant association with some outcome, it's invariably the denominator, the omega-3. This is why I, I don't actually think the, the ratio itself is the thing that matters. I think it's literally just in most of these cases, if not all of these cases, we're just looking at omega-3 insufficiency. That's why when you ask me a question like, you know, does does too much omega-6 matter? I don't know what I don't know what too much omega-6 means, because I've never seen a, 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 a state of affairs in the literature where I could readily identify very, very clearly that too much omega-6 is something that we could actually point to. Um, I just don't know what it means to have too much omega-6. Unless some yeah. unless it's something that you want that we could all just take for granted, right? Like consuming omega six to uh, in such excess that it displaces nutritional adequacy would be bad. Consuming it in such excess that you um, you know enter positive energy balance and become obese that's bad. Those are all things that we could just take for granted. But assuming that we've equalized all of those other variables, I don't know what too much omega six omega six means personally. Eating a lot of corn chips, let's say, and taking sufficient amount of omega three. Right. So that so that would be that, 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 that would fall under. And still going to negate the effect of omega three. Well, yeah, that that would fall under one of the exceptions that I that I granted you, yeah, right? That's it, the like, exceptions, though. D d displacing nutritional adequacy would be one of those things, but that's not something that's unique to omega six, right? That's something that's unique to consuming one nutrient to the exclusion of other nutrients. Mm. You can make the same argument for sugar. You can make the same argument for protein. You can make the same argument for sat for saturated fat. You can make the same argument and for making a anything because, else. Yeah, and I'm making it because that's actually a problem if you look around. Like, most people maybe eat too much omega-6 and too little omega-3. Well, and I can grant you that people well, that's consume... Why I can grant you that. Oh, I, I can grant you a couple things. People generally consume too too many calories. I can grant you that. Um, I can grant yeah. you that people are usually insufficient in omega three, but I'm not willing to grant that people are consuming too much omega six because I just haven't seen it borne out in the literature. Unless the sole oh. source of those excess calories are omega six, but I haven't seen that borne out in the literature either. I'm even watching. Top 10 highest food in omega-6 fatty acids. Cake with frosting. <laughs> Corn chips. Fast foods. Uh, I mean, well, which, I, which are the highest foods in omega-6? Well, the thing... None of those things are Can just omega-3. None of those things are just omega-6. So those things also have carbs and other fats and all sorts of things. They are junk foods. Many yeah, of them. true. And that's, yeah, that's why maybe it's... So, so if, if it comes down to calories, if it comes down to calories somehow, I would grant you that people are over-consuming omega-6 to the extent that their consumption of omega-6 is driving overall caloric or positive calorie balance. But then that's something that I, would, I, would, I wouldn't say is a unique function of omega-6 that just so happens to be what's going on in the population at that time. You can make the same argument for 
sugar or protein or saturated fat or monounsaturated fat as long as they're contributing to positive energy balance. I mean, that just seems trivial to me. Yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm just looking and comparing. I'm looking like uh, rich omega-6 foods versus rich omega-3. And many of the omega-6 foods are quite unhealthy. And, like and, 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 and do, do you understand now why I kept babooning you over and over and over again? And why I kept, like, <laughs> pressing you on this over and over and over again? Because it now it sounds like you really don't have a stable position. Right, which is what I was trying to get at at the very start. At the very start, it doesn't seem like you have a stable position on the matter. No, the stable position is this: that omega six is mainly found in unhealthy foods. Oh, well, does yeah, the, I, 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 I could grant you. I could, I could grant you that. My point is that if you replace all of that omega six with monounsaturated fats, it wouldn't all of a sudden make monounsaturated fat bad. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, but we don't eat just oil, you know, we don't just drink oil. Well, <laughs> we get that oil from somewhere. That, I'm not sure what that has to do with anything that I just said, but my point is that even if most of our excess calories are coming from omega-6, um, I, I wouldn't consider its contribution to the negative health outcomes to be a function uh, or a unique or some unique property of omega-6 I would I would mm. say that that's a property of exceeding caloric balance and mm. and I would say that's a product of an, an energy surplus which means that like mm. I wouldn't like say let's say let's say in the food supply we had the exact same foods but the omega-6 in the foods was down to some like I don't know historic level that you would grant as problematic or whatever but when will you replace all of that omega-6 with um with monounsaturated fat and we still saw all these negative health outcomes would it be your position that monounsaturated fat is uniquely detrimental somehow not always not in every product y okay. yeah yeah go but on, is Julian. it your position is it uh, your position that omega-6 is problematic in any product in High some amount? products in some, so okay, so it's the same with uh, monounsaturated fat. So all you're saying is, but but how do you come to the conclusion that uh, the omega six is the problematic thing in the food, and it's not like uh, the junk food per se, the ultra processed uh, food per se? Maybe it's just um, hyperplatable things like, uh, yeah, junk food contain uh, high amounts of omega six, but uh, the omega six is not the issue. Like if you would replace it, like it, like Nick told, with monounsaturated fat, the junk food would stay the same and it would have the same bad uh, effects on health. So it's not um, the omega six; it's uh, the food that contains the omega six, the junk food, who is, which is bad. That's I'm not. I'm not sure trying to say. Even even if it's healthy, even if it's healthy omega six, yeah. Let's say is grapeseed oil wait, healthy? Wait, wait, wait. wait. What, 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 what is healthy omega six to you, and what is unhealthy omega six to you? Well, it it it, it goes beyond that too. Um, I think you'd have to provide a definition for the word healthy, so that we know we're all referring to the same thing. But but wait, what? Olive. Okay, okay, Olive explain. Explain. healthy. Olives, olive, olives, and avocado are healthy. Sunflower oil, uh, it's not that healthy. Why? Uh, mar margarine, it's not that healthy. Why? Uh, why? What's the definition <laughs> of healthy? Uh, how do you measure health? When Let's is the food say, healthy? When is the food healthy for you? When it doesn't cause too much inflammation. Okay. 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 Wait. Okay. Wait. 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 <laughs> the reductio there is a food that kills you without causing inflammation is healthy. If it doesn't, I mean, if it have low inflammation markers after you intake it, then it's not that bad. Well, yeah, but let's say and we eat a food when it's healthy, like, when it's also nutritional, when it have higher nutritional value or content or phytonutrients or whatever. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, sure. Yeah. So, so there, but on on the definition that you just provided, so healthy is defined as something that doesn't uh, increase inflammatory markers. If you had a food that had like micronutrients in it and whatnot, and didn't increase inflammatory markers, but it also killed you, that that technically on the definition that you provided would be healthy. Well, most of the things that kill you cause inflammation. Well, in this scenario, it's it's not. I'm just telling you, like, what your definition entails. Like, I I've okay, thought about this quite a bit. I, I, I can give you a, I can give you a very stable definition of like things that are healthy and unhealthy. Um, so, I, it, 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 like, just just to, like um just it, let, let me give you my definition. And see how how you see what you think of it, right? So, when I say something is healthy or unhealthy, I'm referring to its relative position on a on a spectrum. Um, so let me describe the spectrum. So all foods I grant are health promoting because they meet the de if they if if a substance meets the definition of a food, it is health promoting by definition. That's trivially true and can be granted. That's fine. But there are foods that are minimally minimally health promoting and foods that are maximally health promoting, and they exist along a spectrum. When I say something is unhealthy, I just mean that it's closer to the minimally health promoting side of the spectrum, and when something is healthy, it's closer to the maximally health promoting side of the spectrum, and the word health is being defined as the 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 let me think about this for a second because i've changed this a couple times in my kind of um in the different debates that i've done so i i would i would define health as the degree to one the the degree to which one exists without illness mm -hmm. right so that so that's my definition of healthy versus unhealthy and my definition of health um, and that seems to make a lot of sense to me. Uh, so when I hear a definition like um, healthy means that you're not experiencing inflammation, that's compatible with a food that doesn't increase inflammatory markers, but also kills you. Right. So but is there a disease without inflammation? Can you name a disease without that doesn't cause inflammation? Oh. That's, a, that, that's, irrelevant to, that's irrelevant to my critique. I don't know. But, but we could even run with uh, your definition, and yeah, we, we can prove to you that see, 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 see it us. That, me, okay, 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 subjective, subjective. Like okay, for some okay. people, some food for okay, okay, for other. Okay, let's I'm, okay, let's yeah. run. Let's run with your definition. You said uh, if it causes inflammation, it is unhealthy. So. Uh, you, in your yes. opinion, seed oils are unhealthy. Yes. So can yes. so can you so can you provide evidence that seed oils cause inflammation in humans? Well, let me look at it. Okay. I need to check the studies again. Okay, because we looked at the reference tw twenty eight, and it was um, non statistically significant increase in inflammation markers. That means, uh, according to your definitions. The seed oils and the reference you provided were healthy. Well, um, this to, to be clear, with, um, uh, in in that reference, um, there was actually an in, an increase with uh, interleukin six with the consumption of the seed oils, but it was no different to the increase that was seen with the water control. So if if, if based on that reference, your position is that seed oils increase inflammation, um, by extension, you'd also have to take the position that water increases inflammation. So water is unhealthy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because water increases inflammation. Yeah, that's another entailment is that if your if your position is that something is unhealthy, if it increases inflammation, that's that's also true of water. So water is unhealthy by your view. To the extent that it increased inflammation. Yeah, and yeah the, the, the seed oils increased uh, inflammation to the same extent as water. So if you take the position that uh, the seed oil is healthy, uh, you have to take the position too that ingesting water is uh, unhealthy. Because it was the same extent it uh, increases uh, or the increased the inflammation marker. So... Yeah. Maybe you could provide another reference if you have at hand, if you have a better one. But if we just look at this, it yeah. 
Now, th there was one meta-analysis. Um, they did a meta-regression analysis looking at uh, linoleic acid, which is basically, I, I would take linoleic acid to just be a proxy for vegetable oil. Um, th there was one meta-regression analysis that showed a statistically significant increase in um, C-reactive protein uh, with increasing linoleic acid, but when you dig into the methods of the authors um, behind that meta regression analysis there there was some there was some weird stuff going on they used um they used a weird methodology well i guess it's not super weird it's just a weird application of the methodology because it was very clear that it was inappropriate to use it in that instance they converted the median and the range to mean and standard deviation when there was an artifactually high um uh like upper bounds for the range for the control group, which was the olive oil group. So what that did was it created an artifactual, uh, statistically significant increase in inflammation with the sunflower seed oil group. And that was pretty mm -hmm. much like 100% of the driving force behind the findings of that meta -anal of that meta regression analysis. But when you actually dig into the paper, you find that when you're looking at the median and the ranges, and because the distributions were non-normal in that uh, in that study. Uh, it would make the most sense to look at the medians and the ranges, not the converted means and standard deviations. And when you look at that, you find that the sunflower seed oil actually decreased inflammation to a, a non-significant degree, but there was a non-significant decrease in inflammation. So even that meta-regression analysis, it, it probably just doesn't go through. And that's probably one of the highest forms of evidence that we have on that particular research question, and even that is fatally flawed. So, I I still I'm still to this day looking for evidence that seed oils cause it in like inflammation, and so far I just like haven't really seen any. Well, the cause in the case, let's say with takeaways, when you fry when you fry like potatoes or chicken or whatever, and if you use the same oil like few times, it's becoming carcinogenic from the temperature of uh, how was the name well are, would, would you say that most people in the population are consuming these like vegetable oils or seed oils in the context of having them like heated and reheated like over and over and over again like like a lot of people are eating like deep fried foods right so yeah. would you uh even, even single cooking a lot of people if they cook on high temperature they go above the point of uh, okay but 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 are you aware that uh the studies uh which are done and most, uh, and most they, they, yeah they look they, wait 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 the studies uh who are done who reported the health outcomes nick was referring to uh they uh observe the people uh who cook like we already told you that they heat the seed oils they eat deep fried foods like yeah, most exactly. people do so uh, we looked we already looked we already looked at it we don't look at people who eat cold pressed rapeseed oil on their salad we look at people in the general population who eat processed foods deep fried foods who heat uh, their seed oils at high temperature so we already looked at it what candies have a lot of omega-6 candies yeah and What's your and point? That's another form of where in which products omega six can be unhealthy. Yeah, but 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 do, but do you think the issue with candy is that it's hyperplatable? It's the sugar content, or is the issue um, of candy the omega six to you? What's well, the issue? Is multidimensional. It's not just one thing. We don't just eat. But 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 I mean, how how you come to the conclusion that uh, omega six is one of the issues from candy? You have many components of the candy, like uh, it is high in calories, it's hyperplatable, it's high in sugar. Maybe it could be it's just the sugar uh, and the removal of fiber. Maybe it's. Um, it's another component of the candy. How do you come to the conclusion that omega-6 is one of the components which uh, leads to harm? Well, I, I, well it, before he answers that, I just want to 
I just want to bring this back. I mean, the specific claim was with regards to carcinogenicity. And if we yes. look at the, the, the carcinogenicity of, um, say, so linoleic acid, for example, um, I think we can grant that most people in the population are consuming linoleic acid in the context of having it heated. Like even cold, even kind of with, with leaving aside cold press, but even like run of the mill vegetable oil that you get in salad dressing has been heated as a part of the deodorization process. So we're, we're, we're pretty much in the general population. We're pretty much only dealing with heated oils, right? And even in that context, the higher LA representation, linoleic acid representation in people's tissues, the lower their cancer mortality generally. And I posted that in the chat. There have been meta analyses done of biomarkers. So we're looking at verified exposure because we're looking at biomarkers. We're not looking at food frequency questionnaires or not looking at some imprecise uh, measurement method. We're literally taking biopsies from people's tissue and measuring the linoleic acid content to confirm that they have been exposed to these foods. And then we're just looking at medical records and looking at their uh, disease, uh, their disease outcomes, in this case, cancer mortality. And it would seem to be the case that the, the more of these seed oils people are being exposed to, the less cancer mortality they seem to have. Yeah, but it's not okay. just in yes. omega six. It's uh, four types of fatty acids. It's not just in uh, the most common one. Mm -hmm. There are other types, mm -hmm. and when you go above the point, the smoke point, in which the oil becomes carcinogenic. But wait, wait! Most most people consume seed oils that are prepared over the smoke uh, over the smoke yes. point. And we still yes, see, but but wait, and we we uh, looked at these people uh, too in the paper uh, link referred to because most of the people eat their food and their seed oils like this, and we still see a decreased risk of cancer with these people who consume more of it. And, and also, I I want to add, uh, I want to add the, uh, you, the people who eat more seed oils, it's. I, I could call it the uh, unhealthy user bias because uh, you already stated uh, a while back that people who eat more omega-6 uh, eat more junk food. So the people who ate most uh, junk food and uh, had more unhealthy behaviors, uh, most likely, and still we see uh, decreased cancer risk. So it doesn't pan out. Yeah, and and I all, I'll also it point out that especially, um, especially if the if the study is funded by oil companies, oh, it doesn't <laughs> and, like, and and, and I, I'll also point it doesn't out make sense. if 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 the exposure of interest, if the omega six exposure of interest is seed oils, for example, we could talk about other exposures, and there are other exposures that are high in other forms of omega six that I could actually grant you would be unhealthy. Um, to eat at higher amounts, not as a function of their omega-6 content necessarily, but we can we can get into that. If the exposure that's being referred to right here is seed oils, and we're not seeing this deleterious effect actually pan out in the real world, like we're not seeing it pan out in any of the population level human outcome data, or even, you know, say the double blind randomized controlled trials that have been done, if we're just not seeing it, like, I don't, I don't know why it's I always, should give any credence to this hypothesis that they're carcinogenic. The problem comes from something that we consider neutral, it becoming bad when it's prepared in some form. That's the problem. So, there is nothing. There is nothing that suggests smoke point in the reference. There is no smoke point. <laughs> I don't know what... In, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, can, yeah. Uh, yeah I can take care there of it. There is nothing about this. And uh, so, yeah, the they don't mention so, smoke point in the neutral. reference. They they don't mention spoke point in the reference. That's fine. There if you listen to what I said response. earlier, you know that this is an inductive argument that I'm making. I'm generalizing from the ex the seed oil exposure that the populations in question typically have, and I'm I'm using that and I'm extrapolating from that to make the inference that the linoleic acid that's in their tissues is likely there because it got there through seed oils 
and it likely got there through seed oils that were heated. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. That's so seed it's oils. not going to be mentioned in the reference be because I'm I'm just making an inductive inference. It's not going to be mentioned in the reference there. Yeah, but something uh, when you produce seed oil, to what temperature do you heat the oil to produce it? And when you cook with it, do what temp? There is difference between the two. Uh, if well, I remember correctly, makes... the vegetable oil deodor deodorization process. Um, yes. Uh, I believe they exceed a hundred Celsius. I'm pretty sure about that. But it's not like to exceed two hundred when you cook, and when most reach above that. Spot. Oh, okay. So the the deodorization, degumming, dewaxing. Um, the vegetable oils reach temperatures of 200 Celsius, so that's like deep frying temperature. Do, so there, so e even profit, before, like so, is, so yeah, yeah, yeah. So say, say like, say I'm in a restaurant and I just cleaned out the deep fryer. I'm just going to refill it with more vegetable oils. The vegetable oils that I'm putting in that deep fryer have already been exposed to deep fryer temperatures. Before they, mm -hmm. before it even goes in the deep fryer. And the problem is a lot of restaurants they reuse that oil, and then it becomes dangerous and carcinogenic and anti-inflammatory. Oh, and, and whoa, wait, whoa, wait, 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 wait! Earlier you said that even one heat treatment could do it to to produce this negative effect. And it's not even one. <laughs> it's often many. It's not one. Yeah, when yeah, no, I can grant that. That, that. That's compatible with what away, you said. They try to save money. Yeah, yeah, and that's compatible with what you said earlier. But earlier, you also said that only one heat treatment can produce the deleterious effect. Now, if that were true, why is there an inverse relationship between seed oil exposure and cancer outcomes in the general population? Sure, <laughs> there is, actually. I'm not sure what study are you referencing it from, like... Yeah, it's the meta analysis that I just put in the uh, in the Safari chat. Dietary intake of biomarker, dietary intake and biomarkers of linoleic acid and mortality systematic review and meta analysis of prospective cohort studies. So both for intake and biomarkers, we found an inverse association between exposure to linoleic acid and uh, cancer. Is that the Chinese study? I no, it, no, it, it's a bunch of cohort studies. It's, like, it's like 44 different yeah, cohort yeah, studies. Yang Pinkley, Prang Hu. Are you sure it's not Chinese study? I don't trust their studies. No, no, these authors are from Harvard. Mm -hmm. Like, this, this is the Har the, I'm pretty sure that this is the Harvard School of Public Health. Yeah, yeah, Harvard, 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 Harvard Medical School, Boston, uh, Harvard, Harvard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a Harvard paper. It's not Chinese. There might be a Chinese Boston. cohort in the paper. It's a meta-analysis. There, there are many different populations represented here. Uh, this one's from, this is Italy, Finland, um, USA, Finland... Israel, Sweden, Finland, USA. But when you read the conclusion, Canada. when you read the conclusion, what it says in the conclusion was associated with modestly lower risk of mortality. That's the, the conclusion doesn't make sense literally. Okay, so wait, are, are you looking at the what actual was the paper? Intake? What was the intake exactly? Like oil and salt, or <laughs> is it really it's different, like what is the intake? Because the problem well, is not uh, when it's neutral, the problem is when it's in uh, the form that most of the people intake. So here's the thing, at, at the point at which the reductions in risk become statistically significant, you're at LA, you're at linoleic acid intake levels that in the general population are going to be achievable pretty much only through vegetable oil consumption. Because you're not going to be able to find people in generally speaking like the general population is not consuming uh say nuts and seeds to the degree that would be necessary to get like 12 percent of their energy as linoleic acid you those that's just not a, that's not going to be a representation of the general population in any population um any westernized population or so to get up to those levels i'm, I'm just inferring that 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 the exposure there is seed oils 
um, because that's the only exposure yes, that would make sense to me. We have also also other fatty acids, other type of fatty acids in omega six. There four. There it's not just linoleic acid. No, I know. No, I I know. I know. But but, but, but here I, I'm taking linoleic acid as a proxy for vegetable oil consumption. Because in order yeah, to get in, in that's order the to... best that's the best one. That's the best one of omega six. The other three are not that good. Sorry, what? Arachidonic acid. It's mainly found in meat. Uh yeah. And this acid, we can go for studies for that acid. So well we wait, 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 wait. I mean we have to keep our eye on the ball here, right? So if the exposure of interest is seed oils for the purpose of resolving this one point. You would admit that population level health outcome does not population level health outcome data does not support the hypothesis that omega six exposure via seed oils would be a risk factor for cancer. Well, if it's used in salad as dressing, no, but if it's well, yeah, used but, that, but fry, that's true, but we, we've, we've already established fry, then, that even if it's used in the that. dressing, it's been, it's been exposed to a heat treatment that is pretty much identical to a deep fryer. Point. The old smoking point. Because they deodorize them with, with heat. They de-wax and deodorize the nothing. oil, I think multiple times yeah, throughout nothing, the process, nothing. using te a temperature that exceeds 200 degrees Celsius, which is like a deep fryer temperature. Mm -hmm. In fact, I, I've, worked in, exactly I've worked in I've worked in like industrial kitchens before. I've worked um, as a chef in many kitchens before. I can tell you that the deep fryers actually very rarely get as high as uh, 200 degrees Celsius. They're usually they're usually sitting in around like 160 to 180 because you only need it hot enough to produce Maillard reaction products. You don't need it to get like super 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 hot. So, like, what the process of actually de-gumming and deodorizing these seed oils is actually more intensive than the process <laughs> of actually just cooking with them, generally speaking. Do we know, like, exact temperature? Okay, I have to go to sleep. I have exam tomorrow. Enough oh, sorry, seed Julian? Okay, yeah. Uh, I have to go to sleep right now. Oh, uh, okay. I just wanted to say goodbye. Okay. okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, I think my uh, I think my headphones just screwed up for a second, sorry. Okay, so, um, yeah, sleep well too. I don't know what time it is in your country, but... <laughs> yeah, it's it's 5.30 p.m. over here. Okay, in the night or in the... Uh, p.m. is... Pa yeah. Okay, past yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, ciao. See you later. Bye. Yeah, so... If seed oils are the exposure, I just don't see any evidence that uh, there's an increased cancer risk. In fact, the, the data would seem, su seem to suggest the opposite, that there's a decrease in cancer risk if seed oils are the exposure. But it's not specified what type of omega-6 was increased, like a intake. Oh, 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 wait. Well, uh, it uh, no, no, no. Uh, yes, it, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It was linoleic acid. That's the type of omega-6 that was increased. And the exposure, because of the levels... In what of, form? In what form? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm inferring, I'm inferring that they're vegetable oils because vegetable oils w are what would be required most likely in order to achieve the levels of intake that were seen in the studies. So you don't believe that? Uh, yeah. So they actually beyond it, the smoking point is carcinogenic. They, they said in the saying? paper, they said in the paper, because LA cannot be produced endogenously, its concentrations in the circulation slash adipose tissues directly depend on dietary intakes from vegetable oils, nuts, seeds, and other foods. So vegetable oils are the, pri are the first thing on the list. Uh, the primary exposure is vegetable oils. And I believe that they, uh, they mention this again. In addition, dietary LA comes from different food sources, including vegetable oils, nuts, seeds, and other plant spreads. So I would take plant-based spreads to just be synonymous with vegetable oils, potentially. Um, so it seems like, by and large, in the general population, like vegetable oils are going to be a, the primary point of contact between people and linoleic acid. So I'm just, I'm just making an inductive inference that the linoleic acid levels observed in these cohorts is primarily being conveyed through seed oil consumption.
Yes, and have you looked at studies for going beyond the smoking point and anti and inflammationary markers? Um, I've seen some literature on it. I'm not sure how representative it is of people's general interactions with vegetable oils. Um, it could be. But at the same time, like, even if the vegetable... I could even grant you that the vegetable oils increase uh, inflammatory markers, but it could also be the case that they decrease cancer risk. Those two things aren't incompatible. What's incompatible again? Oh, yeah, so... I could grant you that vegetable oils, I don't personally believe this, but even just, just for the sake of argument, I could grant you that vegetable oils increase inflammation just for the sake of argument. And that wouldn't actually mean anything with regards to the cancer mortality statistics because something could increase um, inflammatory markers, but still... Something could increase inflammatory markers, but still decrease cancer risk. Yeah, but uh, it doesn't need to be cancer. It needs to be just inflammation, which is still negative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only reason I'm down this particular um, rabbit hole here is because you, you, you spoke specifically about the carcinogenicity of the vegetable oils. Um, yeah, yeah. So that's that's the whole reason I'm going down this tangent. But e yeah. even on the inflammation point, I think we've sufficiently resolved that. There doesn't seem to be any very good, high-quality evidence showing that, you know, increasing omega-6 in particular um, increases inflammatory markers. Even the Mendelian randomization shows really paltry results in that regard. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just not convinced. Dollar rabbit hole. If we get to the other rabbit hole, like in which food... Which are the richest food for omega six? The richest food in omega six. Uh, yeah, what are the richest foods for omega six? Four types of omega six. I'm going to see a lot of junk food. Uh, probably. Yeah. And now it's going to be dependent on, on what type of foods and in what type of condition do we people consume them? Because if you consume vegetable oils that are overheated beyond the smoke point, they're going to be more inflammatory. Um, that may or may not be true. I'm not sure. I kind of think it is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm just personally not sure. Right? Hmm? We can go into that rabbit hole. I mean, because that is it, pretty important. Rabbit it, hole. It, it, yeah, we 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 could go down that rabbit hole. I I still think that the, even if you could demonstrate. My, my voice is going to give out pretty soon, but I'm yeah. I'm just going to say, um, even if you could demonstrate some interaction with inflammation, I don't think it would follow necessarily that there would be an interaction with disease outcomes. Now, my voice literally is going to fail, um, so yeah, I think we should just pick this up so at a different best. time. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, we can continue this if you want. I can gather a little bit about inflammation and smoking point. Okay, right, cool. I'll, I'll talk to you some other okay. time. Alright, see ya. See ya. Have a nice day. You too.